So in my last two reviews, I've been talking about aliens. I guess I've just been on a big alien kick. I've talked about heroic aliens and aliens whose goals go beyond us. So today I'll be talking about some villainous aliens. Well, more like I'm going to talk about a movie and tie in the topic of villain aliens to the video. Villainous aliens are the most common depiction of aliens in movies. From the Martians, Baltans, the aliens from Signs, I don't know their names, the Thing, Thanos, the Exilians. There's no shortage of invading aliens out to get us for one reason or another. They are arguably the most common alien type in media. More than likely due to our fear of the unfamiliar and different. Evil aliens usually have a hint of imperialism and colonialism in them. Whether it's abducting humans for experiments, invading to take over our world, or wanting us for cattle. They commit actual atrocities committed by real people. It's these kinds of aliens that made me fear aliens. Specifically the Martians from War of the Worlds and those things from Sign. God, I, I hate the things from Signs. But my first exposure to villainous aliens was from the Godzilla series. Specifically, the aliens from the third planet of the Black Hole. Or as I'll be calling them, and I've heard them be referred to a few times, the Simians. They first appeared in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, but I'll be talking about its direct sequel instead today. Terror of Mechagodzilla. Terror of Mechagodzilla is the 15th and final movie in the Showa Godzilla series. It was directed by Ishiro Honda, written by Yukiko Takayama, special effects were done by Teriyoshi Nakano, and music was done by Akira Ifukube. The movie stars Katsuhiko Sakai as Akira Ichinose, Tomoko Ai as Katsura Mafune, Akihiko Hirata as Dr. Mafune, Tadao Nakumaru as Tagwa, Goro Mutsumi as Mugao, Toru Kawai as Godzilla, Kazunari Mori as Mechagodzilla, and Tatsumi Nakamoto as Titanosaurus. The plot follows Interpol agents investigating the mystery of Titanosaurus and the doctor behind its discovery, Dr. Mafune. As a band of alien ape men rebuild Mechagodzilla and set their eyes on Tokyo to build a utopian city on its ashes. Terror of Mechagodzilla would go on to be the lowest grossing Godzilla movie for the next 40 years, and would ultimately tell Toho that it was time to give Godzilla a long deserved break. Terror of Mechagodzilla is my brother's favorite Godzilla movie. In fact, he suggested that I make this video. So, I hope you're happy that it's finally done. I didn't watch Terror of Mechagodzilla till I was significantly older. Maybe around 8 or 9 years old. I don't have much nostalgia for this one. And it's not one that I would often revisit. I don't remember disliking the movie. In fact, I actually remember enjoying it quite a lot but I just really can't remember it all that much. It's a fan favorite. So today I just asked the question of whether or not I like Terror of Mechagodzilla. Terror of Mechagodzilla is often considered one of, if not the best of the Showa era Godzilla movies. And it's really not hard to see why. It has a very good story. It handles it, the fact that it's a sequel very well. Tereyoshi Nakano's excellent special effects work. It's also got some really fun villains, and Terror of Mechagodzilla is actually one of the few direct sequels in the Showa era Godzilla movies. First of all, it handles the sequel aspect very well. It expands on the goals of the villains, brings back Mechagodzilla in a pretty natural way, even though Mechagodzilla does like explode into confetti in the previous movie. I guess it still makes sense, they're aliens, they can come up with something. The story is pretty good with the simians wanting to build a new home on top of the ashes of a destroyed Tokyo. A mad scientist who seeks vengeance on a community that ostracized him and called him insane. And the Interpol agents tasked with stopping all of this and the story of his daughter Katsura. I love the Mafunes. Dr. Mafune is the man who discovered Titanosaurus. His discovery of a living dinosaur led him to crazy experiments of wanting to control life. 
which in turn led him to being called crazy and discredited and thrown out of the scientific community. Katsura, Dr. Mafune's daughter, is the best character of the movie. She was turned into a cyborg after a fatal accident and has the controller from Mechagodzilla implanted into her body. She uses a bargaining chip by the simians against Dr. Mafune, and she also ends up falling in love with the main male lead of the movie, Ichinose. And she has one of the saddest endings of the Godzilla series. Probably the saddest ending of the Godzilla series. The action and effects are amazing in this movie. And they're probably the best of the Showa Godzilla era. Shots like Mechagodzilla showing off its missiles and Godzilla's entrance and the scene with Godzilla getting lit on fire are some of the best of the franchise. The new monster Titanosaurus is one of my favorite monsters and is really fun in this movie. He's got some wacky moves like him just jumping super high for some reason or biting Godzilla's lip and throwing him around that way. The hurricane tail and is just random super kick that defies gravity. The Tennisaurus is one of my favorite monsters and he really, and this being his sole movie appearance is quite a shame and he and his presence alone brings this movie up. The soundtrack is very good. It's a standard of Fukube affair and well there's not really much for me to say on that front at the moment. More on that eventually probably. Now to bring the video back to the topic of aliens, I'll talk about one of my favorite aspects of the movie. The aliens of the third planet of the black hole, or just the simians as I've called them a few times throughout the review just because they're literally alien ape men. They're simians who've come to Earth to take over and use Tokyo and major population centers as their new homes after they come in and destroy them and terraform and do whatever they do. And now they do this because, well, as their name implies, their home is being sucked into a black hole. They are masters of technology as their main weapon for invasion is Mechagodzilla. They were introduced in the previous movie, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Now these guys, like basically all of Godzilla's alien villains, are some of my favorite aliens of Tokusatsu. Unlike the Millennians who were, you know, looking to conquer the Earth but just kind of choosing to ignore us, you know, treating us like we're nothing more than just kind of bugs on a table, the Simmons are actually choosing to acknowledge us. They abduct humans to use as slaves to build Mechagodzilla. And I really like their goal of wanting to destroy major human population centers so that they can rebuild a new amazing home on them because, you know, their planet's dying and I assume Earth and humans are close enough to what they were used to. Makes them seem arrogant and petty as if they're trying to one-up us with their superior technology. This is also seen in the fact that their main weapon, Mechagodzilla, was made to one-up Godzilla in all aspects. It's superior durability, it's superior firepower, it's more destructive, and he's just overall stronger. Both times that Godzilla faces off Mechagodzilla in the Showa era, it's required that humanity intervenes and destroys the simian's main control unit in some way. Whether it's using magnets to destroy the main control unit, or Katsura ending her own life to destroy the control unit. It always required cooperation from Godzilla and man to defeat both Mechagodzilla and its controllers, the Simians. And that's why they're some of my favorite villains of Godzilla history. So all in all, Terror of Mechagodzilla is a great entry to the Godzilla franchise. Its amazing effects, fun action, and great writing really bring this entry together, and it's quite sad that it bombed when it first released. While I think the previous movie is better, and this one doesn't make the it probably doesn't make it until like top 20. I still highly recommend Terror of Mechagodzilla. Go watch it now if you want. Anyways, that was all for me. Some closing things before I go. I'm working on a new series uh, talking about the evolution of music in Godzilla movies. That's why I didn't really talk about the music in this one, because I'm eventually going to get to that. And I probably won't talk about music much in these reviews anymore because of it. So look forward to that, I guess. And I'm going to stop doing reviews for a little bit. I'm going to focus on that series. Also, videos are coming out when they're done. Uh, I've got a new job, and I'm going to school again. I started a new semester, so I don't have as much time as I did before. 
Not like I really used it wisely, but frankly, doing these videos kind of takes a lot out of me. So they're just going to come out once they're done, and that's going to be that. Also, when I get back to reviews, I'm going to not do the overarching topic thing. It was a neat idea, but it kind of limited me, and that's kind of why I was just a bit like, I'm going to be just upfront with how I'm writing this, and that's why I just said, oh, and to bring it back to the aliens, and I've been talking about aliens, and I'm being very obvious with the aliens thing. It didn't work out too well for me personally, and I'll probably just stick to more video essay-ish uh, essay, uh, reviews from now on. Anyways, um, a question for the video. Which do you prefer, Terror of Mechagodzilla or Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla? Personally, I love Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla more. This one's still really good, but I just like that one a lot more. Okay, bye.